What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Casey and I have listened. I have read the comments. I have seen all of your feedback about only reviewing the most expensive products on the channel. Well, today we're gonna to be reviewing a very affordable rooftop tent. This is the Top Oak Galaxy 1.0 and it retails for $1,299 US. This tent is very similar to the Roof Nest Falcon Pro, which I had on the JL behind me when I went down and ran the Rubicon Trail back in September. So I'm gonna be looking at a lot of similarities or dissimilarities, things that I think this may fall short versus the Roof Nest Falcon tent. But keep in mind, you can probably buy almost three of these tents for the price of one of those tents. So if you're a casual overlander, casual camping person, and you don't wanna go spend four or $5,000 to get a rooftop tent, watch this video. Maybe I can change your mind. Maybe this is a good tent for you. Now I have a lot of experience with a lot of tents. I've reviewed many, many hard shell rooftop tents. I have one of the most expensive rooftop tents that you can buy on my jail right now. That is the Alley Cab Gen 3R. So I really understand what quality you get at that more expensive tier level. And so I'm gonna share some of that experience with you when we review this tent here today. With that said, I haven't looked at this tent at all. Chef John and I unboxed it yesterday. It showed up on a pallet. You can order these on Amazon. You can order it from Top Oak's website. They ship from the US, so they're not coming from overseas or anything like that. And they will deliver it to your door, just like I have here. Okay, quick pause. I know you guys are here watching this video because you like great deals, but you know what's better than a great deal? Free. So instead of having a product sponsor for this week's video, we're gonna do a giveaway. And with Valentine's Day quickly approaching, I don't want you guys to forget about the love of your life, your Jeep. But don't worry, the crew at Epic Adventure Outfitters has your back covered. They're gonna be giving away one of their Kraken tire inflation systems. And do you know what else is better than free? Money. Epic is giving away $650 in cold hard cash. And not this low octane stuff. No, they're giving away $650 of this high performance US currency. So if you wanna have a chance to win the best tire inflation system on the market, and to have a little extra cash if you wanna make it rain while airing up your Jeep, all you need to do is follow the link in the description below and pin comment, provide your email address, follow some awesome social media accounts, which you should be following anyways, and they're gonna be drawing the winner on Valentine's Day 2024. All the details that you need to know to be eligible for this giveaway are found by following the link in the description below and pinned comment. But seriously, who doesn't like some free Jeep parts and some free cash? Go sign up right now before it's too late. What are you doing? Sign up, let's go. Okay, back to the review. Some of you may know, but I live in British Columbia, which is extremely rainy. I had this sitting out overnight. We had a bit of a rainstorm last night. What I did notice is that the centerpiece on the tent is recessed and then it has a raised outer lip. So if this is sitting in a flat spot or even like it is on just a slight angle, the water has area to pool. So there is gonna be water sitting on the top of this uh, when your vehicle's parked in your driveway or in not in use. The other thing I wanna point out about this is that this isn't or doesn't seem to be a single sheet of aluminum. There is a rubber sealing, a rubber seal or some caulking or something like that between this outer ridge and this inner plate. And so that is definitely an area that can deteriorate over time. You will want to keep an eye on this. All right, let's get our measuring tape out. So this is going to measure in at about 83 inches for the shell, but there is a little bit uh, more length if you include the latches and hinges at about 85 inches. For width, we're about 56 inches wide, but we also have exterior gas struts on the side, which are gonna add, which are gonna add a couple extra inches, putting this about 58 inches in width. So as I just mentioned, we do have exterior gas struts. Kind of wish that these were black so that it kind of blended in a little bit, but I guess a gas strut is something you could replace. Since this is a wedge style tent, we can actually position the ladder mounts on any of the three sides. We've got a couple mounts for where the ladder can hook on there. Now Top Oak has included more mounts, so you don't actually have to move them. You can just use the mounts on the front. And 
they have another set of mounts on this side. So you don't actually have to decide where you put your ladder uh, permanently. You can just kind of mount it up anywhere you want it when you're setting this up. Now the latches on this are very, very similar to what I've been using on my roof nest condor. Let me get these keys off. Now these aren't really, they're not really gonna be locking you out of this tent. The lock on these are more to just secure the latch. So you see, it's just a, tr just a triangle and you can put it in here and turn the little uh, latch behind here. But if you ever lose one of these or forget one of these, you can just put your finger in there and do that if you want. So it's not really locking it. It's just, it's really just an extra layer of security so that something can't bump this and undo the latch. Same thing I have on my, uh, my other tents. I never ever use these. All right, coming around to the hinge side of the tent, we have four hinges that are black on the front of the tent, which is nice. They kind of blend in a little bit more. Now, something to watch out for, I've noticed this on my roof nest with both this style of hinge as well as latch, is because these are, this is like a bolt, a pin with a screw that goes into it. I would keep an eye on these if you do a lot of bumpy road driving, because I have noticed the screws back off on some of my latches on my roof nest tent, and uh, I've Loctited them in place to, to keep them from coming out. So underneath we have a fairly standard track system that we can use a couple metal straps to latch that onto a crossbar type roof rack system. One thing that this track is missing that I like to see on other track systems are little open spots where you can slot the bolt through somewhere else in the track than just on the ends, that makes installing these a lot easier because when this is sitting on your rail, you can just push a bolt into the track on each side and then slide it in rather than having to come all the way from the front or the back and having to slide that bolt, lift the tent up, slide it over your rail and then put the tent back down. So real simple change that uh, Top Oak could have included on this, but there's nowhere to drop your bolts in uh, mid rail. Um, one last thing before we pop this open, the gap between the top piece and the bottom piece is sealed by a foam, uh, some sort of strip. We'll have a look at it this when we open it, but this looks like it's compressing it nicely and evenly all the way around, which will be important for keeping both water and dust out. Keeping dust out of the tents are super important to me. So having a good seal when this is closed is nice. All right, let's get this tent opened up and have a look on the inside and see what I think. Hang on, I was about to pop this open, but I wanted to point this out before I did. Remember when I was talking about those loose bolts? Look at this, this bolt right here is super loose. I can. I was just tightening it, uh, uh, tightening it with my fingers here, but look at, this is closed. So definitely going to take a look at this and make some adjustments because that is a lot of slop. And if we didn't have this upper piece to lock this in place, this thing won't even stay closed. Look at the other one on this side is much tighter. So. I'm going to go through and tighten up these little nuts and bolts on this hinge. I think that'll remove a lot of this slop because this one doesn't seem to pop open quite as easily. Waterfall. I've got a pull strap here to pull the tent down when it's 15 feet in the air. Now this tent does have a bump out, so it's not just a wedge. It's gonna have this other piece here it goes up and out like that. And it's gonna give you a lot more room and it's gonna feel a lot roomier in the tent. Now, one thing I noticed when using this type of bump out wedge tent when I was on the Rubicon is closing this down is the material gets all hung up and you've gotta climb in the tent to get it out. It's stuck. You've got to get this unstuck to be able to close this. So we've got a couple of these extruded aluminum bars. I don't know if this is to go on the top to be able to mount cargo, but 
Now here's a difference between the uh, Roof Nest Falcon and the Galaxy. That is the support bars that go and hold this hoop in place. They are actually mounted on both sides to the cross rail. The Roof Nest tent has a bar that you push and have to hold in place and latch, which is kind of annoying, and take down every time. So it's got a hinge above us. We'll talk about the lights in a second, but it sits on a hinge and this will clip on to our, should clip on. There we go. And then we can push this out and hold it tight. We have two of these bars because we actually have another one right there. So to fully set this up, you need to come over to this side, which if you're eight feet in the air, you're actually gonna be climbing into your tent to do this and then put this bar up. Do we actually need to put this bar up? Because I'm kind of lazy sometimes and I don't like doing any more work than I have to be doing. You know, unless it was really windy or bad weather, I think I'd be totally fine with just putting one of these bars up because this is not going to come back with that bar in place. So if it was say windy or something like that, you know, bring this side out. In the real world of me using this, I'm probably only ever gonna put one bar up. What's nice is it doesn't matter which side you have your ladder on, you can just put the bar up on the side that your ladder's on. Having them on the hinges and out of the way, clipping onto these little clips when you're storing your tent, to me, seems better than a bar I have to climb in, hold, extend, and do, do this while holding the bar and then latch it into place. I like this system better. Yeah, you don't have to, I don't think you have to do both sides, honestly, but we will. And I'm not even gonna clamp that side on because I'm lazy. The most important thing is we have a ladder, which as you can see, can be stored in your tent. And they do include a ladder bag. Keep your inside of your tent clean. And then we've got a box, which we'll open in a second. Another box, pretty standard ladder. Max load 150 kilograms, so if you're over 300 pounds, this is not for you. If you've got a taller Jeep than I have, there's gonna be plenty of ladder for you to use. We could actually bump this down a rung or two. This has the underside latches, so you can push these little buttons underneath and the whole ladder drops down like that. I much prefer this style of button on the bottom than to the ones on the front that you have to be very careful you don't get your fingers clipped as it's coming down. And then this ladder does have flat rungs. Some of the uh, newer ladders have their rungs already tilted so that it's much more comfortable on your feet when you're climbing up. So this does not have that. Would be nice if they started including that in like every ladder because I can't imagine it's more expensive to have a different rung on here. And then the top of this is just a hook so there's no way to secure this on. It's just gonna sit and hold it in this channel. There we go. But this will at least prevent it from pulling away if you jump on your ladder and kind of pull back a bit. You can put this onto any of the ladder mounts because they include ladder mounts for both sides and the front. So you don't have to mess around and decide which uh, side you want and then have to put the mounts on there. I think a moment ago when I said they include a ladder bag, I was incorrect. This does not look like a ladder bag upon closer inspection. This looks like a shoe bag to hang on the outside of your tent. This doesn't look like you would stick a ladder in here. There's a couple compartments for shoes. All right, let's see what else do we got here. And in the event that you receive a damaged product, let them know, send some photos of the packaging. So that's kind of cool. They uh, take responsibility for getting this to you. You can either pick this up on Amazon or directly on uh, Top Oak's website, and they do ship from California. So it is in the United States they ship from. They can ship them up here to Canada, but I did have to cover taxes and brokerage on top of the cost of the tent, which was about 250 bucks. Be interesting to hear if anybody has any experience with Top Oak's warranties and replacements, because they offer free replacement. They will arrange for a new tent to be shipped for you if there's damage or a refund, all that kind of stuff. You don't have to ship it back. And what's in the box? 
It looks like we have some aluminum brackets that we can mount to the side of this so that we can put those crossbars on the top and hardware and they even include wrenches in case you don't have tools. It doesn't actually say how much weight we can put on the roof. The tent does weigh 178 pounds. I think I mentioned that earlier. Yep, doesn't, doesn't say how much weight we can put on the top. So they're gonna use these U-shaped metal straps. And basically they just go to the underside of that rail underneath and bolt onto your crossbars. And then we've got some mounting hardware. So these are gonna slide into that T-track to hold the bolts in place. This I don't recommend. What they've included here are the bolts, but they've included these knobs. In my experience, these knobs are really hard to tighten down on the bolts to secure your tent. And I really want my tent to be secure on my, my Jeep because we're off-roading as well as traveling on the highway a lot. So they don't include any nuts for these bolts, just these handles, which uh, I'm gonna recommend you go out and pick up some nuts to go on these, these bolts. Now, one thing I noticed on their website when I was just having a look is that uh, this is supposed to include a ladder bag that encompasses the entire ladder, as well as it says two shoe bags and a gear grid. Oh, the gear grid's installed. I'm gonna talk to Top Oak and ask them where the ladder bag is. This does have the doors that you have to crawl over, which drive me nuts and tense. I like the ones that I can roll up, but I think that's a bit of a personal preference. But this does have something that I think is super important, and that is the mesh on the outside of the panels. My other roof nest tent actually has the mesh on the inside, and I really don't like that because then when I go to bed, I have to open my screen to close the solid panel. But on this tent, not the case. We've got the screen on the outside where it should be. The only improvement I would suggest, and this is a big one I noticed with my Alucab tent, I would like to see the screen and the door as one piece so that you don't have to do two zippers if you've got the solid panel closed and the screen closed. So in order to close this up fully, we need to bring up the zipper with the solid panel and then the screen. This is the same as the Falcon Pro. So whether you spend three times the amount or not, you get the same feature and functionality. But if you buy a Alucab tent for even more, you're gonna get that built into it. We've got this nylon material that's supposed to be waterproof. Everything on the inside is tape sealed on all the seams to prevent leaking. On the top, we have this fly that's supposed to be rated for 5,000 millimeters, which you can also peel back and take off. And it has, it has like a plastic window on the top so that even with the fly on, you can still open your inside panel and get some nice light in from the top. If it's raining, like it's probably going to do here shortly. We also have some venting here that you can't close. It has some mesh on the inside of this and that's gonna help uh, with some condensation. I do like this type of material for this climate. It seems to work really well in the tents that I've used uh, that have similar material in the wet and damp uh, and very humid in the winter. So you get a lot of condensation on the inside. This material does seem to breathe well and prevent a lot of condensation. And then of course we can open the back panel and we have the screen on the outside. When I was down the Rubicon, I really did enjoy this style of tent when I wanted to just kind of climb in here and hang out for a little bit. Wow, we've got bugs. It's January, by the way, guys. I don't know if you saw that. It looked like a big wasp. It's like January and we've got bugs already starting. Anyways, uh, down on the Rubicon, it was really nice to kind of climb in here and just sit back and hang out. You could close up all the screens and leave all these uh, panels down and it just felt nice and open and airy. So next to the bump out, we have some pockets you can store your gear in. Uh, these are built into the outer shell. They're not an extra piece of material and everything once again is taped over all of the seams. I did find these really handy because when I was sleeping with my head on this end, I could put my phone in here at night. I could put a drink in here and it would hold it and you could put some other gear if you want. And I'll just open up this 
top piece real quick so we get maximum light and we'll move inside. Have a look at the mattress. Uh, since we don't have a crossbar here, like we did in the other tent, you definitely need to roll this up so that's not out of the way and then secure it. And I hate these little ties for my fingers. So I'm just going to take a carabiner and hook it onto the tie. Now, when we roll this up, I can just easily tuck this out of the way. There we go. Much easier. Look how bright it is in here. I don't see anywhere that any water got to any of this through the torrential rains last night. There's a couple little damp spots from water that's dripped in when we open these side panels, but this looks, this feels like a single density foam mattress and it is two inches thick. Underneath the foam mattress, we have a anti-condensation mat, which is gonna help airflow go underneath of this and prevent any condensation from accumulating on this metal bottom. Now, in my experience, a two inch mattress usually isn't enough. I usually bring uh, my Thermarest to go on top of this. This is a, this is a very soft mattress. So, so I, I think this is memory foam. It's not very, very, it's not hard. Some of the mattresses you get in these tents are just rock solid and they don't feel like a mattress at all. So we'll give this the quick lay down test. It definitely feels like uh, I'm not bottoming out on my pressure points. So my hip and my shoulder, usually that's where I'll go through these thinner mattresses. But if it has room for a ladder, I would trade off being able to carry the ladder inside for like a four inch memory foam mattress. That would be a lot nicer. Like let's get a nice thick mattress in here and I would, I'll gladly carry my ladder around in my Jeep than a, uh, then have a thinner mattress in my rooftop tent. But this is uh, feeling more comfortable than a lot of mattresses that you could end up with in some of your rooftop tents. And then right here we have a single LED strip that goes across the top that is mounted to a clip. So you could remove this if you have to, there's a couple clips there. And, oh, this is awesome. We have a D-ring here that I can hang stuff to like my other light, if this light isn't working. I don't see this very often, a place to hang a little lantern or something in the top of your rooftop tent. And now I do have a USB wire here. I'll just, And this is going to power, holy moly. We're gonna run this all the way into the Jeep. So if you didn't want to uh, lug your portable power station up into your tent just to be able to have your light on, I suppose you could, uh, figure out a way to run this all the way down the tent and into your vehicle. Look how long this is. Like, <laughs> I could run this into somebody else's vehicle. Um, I'm plugging this into my EcoFlow River 2 Pro, which EcoFlow makes some very awesome portable power stations if you wanna check them out. I'll put a link down in the description below. Now we have lights in here and we have a little on and off switch. We can change the colors. We can turn it up and down. So this is this is way better than some of the other lights that, that I've seen in these. And when you're packing up, you don't know what to do with your massive USB cable. Just shove it in this little gear holder that's right here attached to the roof of the tent. There we go. And then on the roof, we have this material. It's sort of a quilted thin material that's going to reduce or prevent condensation from occurring on the cold metal if it's cooler and humid. Some other tents do have the, a problem with this where condensation will accumulate on this big metal panel or plastic panel and then drip and run down on your feet. So shouldn't be a problem for this. And then we've got a couple more gear bags or gear holders attached to the corners here on both on both sides. So we've got one on one on this side and over here, one on that side. And then we've got this optional accessory that you can get for the tent. And this is a winter insulation kit. And this is gonna go inside here somehow and keep the tent warmer. Okay, uh, it took me about three or four minutes to get this installed. It just clips onto the bar across the top and all the little, little D-rings that are all around this. 
it's an insulated layer. It's not super thick, it's sort of a quilted insulated layer. I would say, unless you're heading somewhere extremely cold, and in which case I have other uh, ways to combat the cold, I don't think I would install this. Um, because the problem with this is now you can't use your light, you can't use any of your storage on the bump out or on the roof. You can't get access to these poles that you have to extend to hold the bump out in place. And now you have an extra panel you have to unzip and zip up every time. So, neat idea. I think I would skip this one though. Okay, let's see how much bedding we can actually store in here. So my sleep roll is a multi-layered sleep system. When I was talking about, I have better things for when it's cold. The bottom layer is the Thermarest Mondo King. And then between my sheet, I have a USB heated sleeping pad, which if it's really cold, this turns the sleep system into an oven. It's so warm. It puts off a little bit of heat, but this entire Zen Bivy sleep system is down. So we have a down hood, but then we have a down quilt that goes over top. And so the sheet is holding that heated pad in between. So what I wanna do is see if I can close up this rooftop tent with my sleep system in place. So we have to accommodate this frame here. You can see how the pillows kind of get in the way a little bit. So you gotta make sure your pillows aren't gonna get jammed up by this frame. I'll see if we can actually get this closed uh, with all this in here. Don't forget the bungee cord. That will help tuck the materials in. And a little trick, put your strap inside the bungee cord because then when you pull down on this, you see how it tucks the material in? Now we don't need to do that because we're not hanging off the back of our Jeep today, but if you were, that's how you do it. Make sure we don't have any, me any material protruding out. Well, there you go. We've got the airbed, my heated pad, as well as my Zen Bevy quilt and two pillows. And we were able to get it closed with like, like this is not, not these latches are not hard to bolt down. It's actually, now it's put some pressure on it so that it's not, look at, these are tight now. Let's see if we can stuff the ladder in there as well. Well, we've got room for it. Let's see if it closes. Hmm. Two pillows, sleep system, and a ladder. Interesting. I think that's the first time I've had a rooftop tent that I can store that much stuff inside of it and get it closed without it bowing and pushing really hard on the latches. So final thoughts, I don't know guys, for $12.99, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. You're not having to invest a ton of money into a really expensive rooftop tent and maybe you're just getting into overlanding and you're not sure how much you're gonna use it or maybe you only go out a couple of times a year. It's kind of hard to justify three or four or $5,000 on a rooftop tent. And this checks a lot of boxes. My initial walk around, I don't see anything that really is a major red flag with this tent. It's got a couple of little quirks. I definitely think there's a few little things that they can improve like the ladder and maybe the top shell not, not holding water and maybe change the panels out to be one panel that has a drop down. If they fixed a couple of those little things in the next version, the Galaxy 2.0, this is gonna be a serious competitor to some of the more expensive rooftop tents and maybe that will push them to bring some of their prices down to be a bit more reasonable for you guys getting into your first rooftop tent, getting out there overlanding camping with your off-road vehicles. I'll leave some links down in the description below and pinned comment if you wanna check this out. It sometimes is available on Amazon if it's not sold out or you can order it from Top Oak's website. And I'll leave the final decision with you guys, but let me know what you think of this or if you've used a Top Oak tent or some other tents you'd like to see me review down in the comments below. I'll check them out and see if I can get my hands on them and give you guys some of my thoughts. But for $12.99, I'm impressed.